Mr. Aldous Huxley, renowned essayist and novelist, who during the spring semester is residing at the university in his capacity as a Ford Research Professor. Mr. Huxley has recently returned from a conference at the Institute for the Study of Democratic Institutions in Santa Barbara, where the discussion focused on the development of new techniques by which to control and direct human behavior. Traditionally, it has been possible to suppress individual freedom but through the application of physical coercion, through the appeal of ideologies, uh, through the manipulation of man's physical and social environment, and more recently through the uh, techniques, the cruder techniques of psychological conditioning. The ultimate revolution about which Mr. Huxley will speak today concerns itself with the development of new behavioral controls which operate directly upon the psychophysiological organisms of man, that is, the capacity to replace external constraint by internal compulsions. As those of us who are familiar with Mr. Huxley's uh, works well know, this is a subject with which he has been concerned for, for quite a period of time. Uh, Mr. Huxley will make a presentation of approximately half an hour, followed by some brief discussions and questions by the two panelists sitting to my left, uh, Ms. Lillian Rivlin and Mr. John Post. And Mr. Huxley. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, first of all, the, uh, I'd like to say that the conference at Santa Barbara was not directly concerned with the control of the mind. That was uh, a conference, there have been two of them now, at the University of California Medical Center in San Francisco, one this year, which I didn't attend, and one two years ago, where, where there was a considerable discussion on this uh, subject. At Santa Barbara, we were talking about technology in general and the um, the effects it's likely to have on society and the problems uh, related to uh, technological uh, transplanting of technology, uh, technology into underdeveloped countries. Well, now, in regard to this problem of, uh, of the ultimate revolution, uh, this has been very well summed up by the moderator. Uh, in the past, we can say that uh, all revolutions have essentially aimed at changing uh, the environment in order to change the individual. I mean, there's been the uh, political revolution, the economic revolution. Uh, in the time of the Reformation, uh, the religious revolution. Uh, all these uh, aimed, as I say, not directly at the human being, but at his surroundings, so that by modifying the surroundings, you did achieve uh, in, at one remove a, an effect upon the human being. Today, uh, we are faced, I think, with the approach of what may be called the ultimate revolution, the final revolution, where a man can act directly on uh, the mind body of his fellows. Well, needless to say, some kind of direct action on human mind bodies has been going on since the beginning of time. Uh, but th this has generally been uh, of a violent nature. The techniques of terrorism have been known from time immemorial, and uh, w people have employed them with more or less uh, ingenuity, sometimes with uh, the utmost crudity, sometimes with a, a good deal of skill uh, acquired uh, by a process of trial and error, finding out what the best ways of uh, using torture, imprisonment, uh, constraints of various kinds. Uh, but uh, as um, I think it was Metternich said uh, many years ago, uh, you can do everything with bayonets except sit on them. Uh, that if you are going to control any population for any length of time, you must have some measure of consent. It's exceedingly difficult to see uh, how pure terrorism can function indefinitely. It can function for a fairly long time, but I think uh, sooner or later you have to bring in an element of persuasion, an element of, of getting people to consent to what is happening to them. Well, it seems to me that the the nature of the ultimate revolution with which we are now faced is precisely this, uh, that we are in process of developing a whole series of techniques which uh, will enable the controlling oligarchy, who 
have always existed and presumably always will exist, uh, to get people actually to love their servitude. Uh, th this is the, seems to me the, the ultimate uh, in malevolent revolution, shall we say. And uh, this, is a, this is a problem which uh, has interested me for many years and about which I wrote uh, 30 years ago a, a fable, The Brave New World, which uh, is uh, essentially the account of a society making use of all the devices at that time available and some of the devices which uh, um, I imagined to be possible, uh, making use of them in order to, first of all, to standardize the population, to iron out uh, inconvenient human dis uh, um, differences, uh, to create, uh, so to say, mass-produced uh, models of human beings arranged uh, in some kind of a scientific uh, caste system. And uh, since then, I have uh, con continued to be extremely interested uh, in this problem, and I have noticed uh, with increasing dismay that uh, a number of the predictions which were purely fantastic when I made them 30 years ago uh, have come true or, or seem in process of coming true, that uh, a number of techniques about which I talked seem to be here already, and that there seems to be a general movement uh, in the direction of this kind of ultimate revolution, this, this method of control uh, by which uh, people can be made to enjoy a state of affairs which, by any decent standard, they ought not to enjoy. Uh, this, I mean, the enjoyment of, uh, of servitude. Well, uh, th this, um, this process, as I say, has uh, gone on for over, over the years, and um, I become more and more interested uh, in what is happening. And here I would like uh, briefly to, uh, to compare what the parable of Brave New World with uh, another parable which was put forth more recently uh, in uh, George Orwell's book, 1984. Uh, Orwell wrote his book between, I think, between 45 and 48, uh, at the time when the Stalini Stalinist uh, terror regime was still in full swing, and just after the uh, collapse of the Hitlerian terror regime. And his book, uh, which I admire greatly, it's a book of very great talent and extraordinary ingenuity, uh, shows, um, is so to say, a projection into the future of the immediate past, of what for him was the immediate past, and the immediate present. It was a projection into the future of a society uh, where control was exercised wholly by terrorism, and uh, the violent uh, attacks upon the mind body of individuals. Whereas uh, my own uh, book, which was uh, written uh, in, in 1932, when there was only a, a mild dictatorship in the form of Mussolini uh, in existence, was not overshadowed by the idea of terrorism. And uh, I was therefore free in a way which Orwell was not free, uh, to think about these other methods uh, of control, the, these um, non-violent methods. And my, I'm inclined to think that uh, the scientific dictatorships of the future, and I think there are going to be scientific dictatorships in many parts of the world, will be probably a good deal nearer to the Brave New World pattern uh, than to the uh, 1984 pattern. They will be a good deal nearer, not because of any humanitarian qualms in the scientific dictators, uh, but simply because the brave new world pattern is probably a good deal more efficient than the other. That if you can uh, get people